Hello and welcome to Programming Like It's 1979. I woke up on Thanksgiving morning only to discover that Steam has me figured out and recommended a programming game called Turing Complete that looks a lot like yet another version, gamified version, of the Nan to Tetris course that I've been making videos on. Well, since it's a holiday and I don't feel like doing real work, let's do some game work. And let's see what's uh, see what Turing Complete is all about. Congratulations, you have been abducted. We are testing you. The rules are simple. Build a functional computer or you will be eaten. Good luck. Well, I do not want to be eaten. Let's see, a signal flows from the in component to the out component. In the upper left corner under input, there's a green icon. Click on it to turn this off. There we go. Now it's off and the out is off also. Decided I'm not a plant. Okay. The challenge is to figure out how the NAND component works. Be sure to figure it out before you complete this level. Well, we know that the NAND component means not AND. So if we turn on both of these inputs, then the output will be off. And everything else should be on in every other case. All right, it's kind of like not so much a game as a quiz so far. Let's see what happens next. Okay, so by answering that test, we've unlocked a NAND component. And I like their, their little visual representation of the truth table with green and red instead of ones and zeros. Time for us to build a circuit. Build a NOT gate. In this level, you build the circuit that matches table. Feel like that should be said with a Russian accent. In this level, you build circuit that matches table. Using NAND gate, build the NOT gate. They describe this. I'm actually liking this less now, now that I see this in context. Uh, it's actually a little bit hard to read, and this is a very simple truth table. So I don't know what that's going to look like when we have a more complicated circuit. As we talked about in, I think, our first circuit video, uh, NOT gate is a NAND gate with the same input connected to both output. Uh, <laughs> with the same input connected to both inputs of the NAND gate. Oh, that was neat. That was very easy to drag that on, to drag a new part on. Right-clicking, it looks like, makes it go away. I feel like the makers of digital could uh, maybe learn a little bit from how easy that is to use. Of course, now I have this here. Now I'm very upset. I gotta get rid of it all. Let's see. We're gonna do this, and then we will do that. We'll do that. And that goes there. Click next tick to see where is next tick. Run ticks, next tick. I see, it runs the test one at a time. Great, we've unlocked a not gate and the level map. Well, this is exciting. Let's take a look at the level map. Use keyboard to pan. I'm going to make this nice and big so we can all see it. What have we got? NOR gate, OR gate, AND gate, which goes to always on. Second tick. Some more gates. Half adders. Mux and a demux. Bit inverter decoder. So here we're getting into the CPU, kind of. Counters, memory, arithmetic. This is all, this looks like the ALU over here. Going up to CPU architecture. So right here, working computer, this is where most of these gamified NAND to Tetris games stop. So nandgame.com, for example, stops here. MHRD stops here. Um, the uh, there was someone did a version of this on GitHub that was kind of a cookie clicker type game. Stop there. But this game looks like it goes on into adding assembly language programming, and it looks like you're actually writing a few real programs. So I'm kind of excited by that. More CPU architecture functions and assembly language challenges. Oh, I got to tell you. I don't know that I'm going to love the game, but I'm excited by its ambition. 
So let's uh, let's start with the AND gate. I think that should be. Now they're comparing me to uh, to an elephant. Okay. So what happens with an AND gate? I think an AND gate is just the inverse of the NAND gate. It's actually not the most efficient way to make one, but I don't care. Let's see, step through. Yep, great. So that unlocks our AND component. Oh, so this is, okay, so we actually don't have the AND gate for use here. They are clearly assuming that they uh, that we do these left to right. You should be happy you get to participate in glorious tests. Okay, oh, very advanced people from the galactic civilization. All right, an OR gate. What is an OR gate? If I recall correctly, the OR, can I put this on top of that? No. An OR gate is kind of visually the inverse of the AND gate. I know that's a very sloppy way to describe it. We're going to put the knock gates before the end. Is that right? That's right. NOR gate. Now, this one is interesting. I don't know that I've ever built a NOR gate. I like their little, their little comedy routines here. They're cute. Okay. Uh, I've never built a NOR gate out of a NAND gate. So... That's going to be interesting. I'm sure it won't be too difficult. So what is a NOR gate? A NOR gate is on when both inputs are false. And in every other situation, it is off. So that is kind of an OR that's been inverted, right? So we're going to make something that looks exactly like our OR gate did. I'll go there, that I'll go there, and then we're going to invert it, right? This will be on if either of the inputs is on. And then we're going to invert it so it is off. Yay! All right, what do we got here? Always on. Create a circuit that is always on. Well, we, let's see. So our input can be on or it can be off. So if our circuit is on, then that will work. And if our circuit is off, then a not gate. Ooh, that's so ugly. Can I move it? No, oh God. Let's try to get rid of that. I have to be neat. I'm very disappointed by that. Okay, that should be fine. Yay! We've unlocked a manual entry. And now we've unlocked this on circuit. It's just to have a byte that's always on. Well, what happens if I click this? Oh, we get a little documentation. And here they explain that both the NAND and the NOR gates are universal gates. If you have a NAND or a NOR, you can build everything else. And that's actually not true from the other gates. The other way I've heard it is if you have an AND, OR, or NOT. No, AND, OR, AND, NOT separately. Uh, you have uh, enough to build anything. Onwards. As you know, these tests culminate in building a functional computer. Functioning computer. Considered sentient by law. Well, that's a pretty good motivation. Output on, or, or one, on the second tick only. All right, so, so this is a little deceptive, right? Because their use of the phrase on the second tick makes me want to talk about sequential circuits. But, in other words, something that happens at a certain time. But this is not time. This is still just a purely combinatoric circuit. And so really what they're saying is this circuit is on when input one is high and input two is low and in no other situation. So what did I say? I used the word and, and I like, 
What's this misc? Okay. I like whenever I say the word and, I like using that as, um, as an indication that we probably need an AND gate somewhere in here. So, if input one is high and input two is low, then this is going to be high. And I'm going to use this OR just as a way to, you know, I don't need that at all. I don't need that at all. I think, how do I get rid of it? Right click. I think that's it. I think that might be the sum total of the logic. Let's see if that's correct. Yes, it was. Yay. And we've now unlocked a tip. You can select a component with its pins by double clicking it. Okay. I really dislike that they're calling this second or third tick uh, because it's not time based. This level is difficult, so don't be discouraged. I'll try not to be discouraged, Mom. All right, so what are we doing? So if I recall correctly, the thing with an XOR gate is that if both of these are on, then we don't want, right? I am, by the way, not worried about efficiency even a little bit. So can I cross here? What happens there? That looks like it maintains the separation, so I'm, I'm going to try that. Okay, so that goes there. And or. So if either of these is... And then an AND gate between the two of these. I don't think XOR is that difficult, is it? Really? I'd love to hear in the comments from you. Uh, do you think XOR is a difficult concept? If it is, if you find it difficult, please say so and please say why. And maybe I can go into more detail. Let's see if I got it right. Yeah. We got a description of our truth table here. And they mentioned Karnal maps. That's pretty cool. So I love games like this. The other game that, that does a lot of this is a machine learning game called Wild True Learn that very heavily calls out to Wikipedia uh, to teach you things, basically, or to recommend that you go learn things yourself. The other game that did this a lot, to the point where it had no manual, it just said, go read a bunch of Wikipedia pages, was the Zaktronics game Constructor, which was a flash game that you really can't find anymore. Uh, easily. Online profile. Find it in the main menu. Oh, I see. I can have a profile now. Well, maybe I'll do that between, uh, between videos. Let's go on and do a little more. So create an OR gate with three inputs. That is very easy. We're just going to do this. And as I said, I am Life is too short for me to worry about efficiency here, so I'm not going to. I'm going to make these in the most obvious, simplest way possible. Run the ticks. Great. That's an OR gate. I bet this is a bigger AND gate. Okay. Create an AND gate with three inputs. That's going to be basically the same thing. That goes there there that goes there third input goes into our second AND gate um, there are reasons not to cascade gates like this if you're 8 16 32 deep the time for the electricity to travel through the circuit will be serialized and so if you have a lot of these you, you kind of want to set up a tiered structure and then the runtime will be, I think it's like log n or n log n instead of that. So, all right, run this. That goes great. 
That goes great. I speak English well. XNOR. Create the inverse XOR gate, also known as XNOR. You know, I'm not even going to look at the truth table. I'm going to be very sloppy here because they called it the inverse XOR gate. So without even reading the truth table, can't I put down an XOR gate and then put down an inverter? I'm giving you a window into my sloppy way of thinking. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's, it's kind of funny how we solve these problems. Um, I've had people ask questions in the comments, like, how did you figure out to do this this way? And the answer differs depending on the problem. Sometimes you actually do take a very algorithmic approach to particularly gate design if you're using something like a Carnal map. Um, uh, other times, it's you're using a heuristic, you're using instinct, and that's not a very satisfying answer, right? It's not a very engineering-focused answer. But I think that's how we as humans do deal with complexity, is to try and squint our eyes and see what kind of disappears from view, and are we left with just the essentials by doing that? And in this case, that worked out great. If you tell me that the XOR gate is the XNOR gate is the inverse of the XOR gate, and I have an inverter, I now don't even have to look at the truth table unless your words were incorrect. All right, so that completes all of the basic logic section of this game, Turing Complete. It looks like starting in the next episode, we're going to get into some arithmetic and some I think I saw an adder here, an input selector. So the next one's going to be a little more involved than this. But uh, I, I don't know. I find this this is a cute little game. It cost me 20 bucks. I think uh, at this point, it's early days. I'm feeling this was 20 bucks well spent. And uh, I encourage you to check it out yourself if you're curious. This has been Programming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching. <laughs>